वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीरू टंडन एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश वी एस एस जी कॉलेज कानपुर हेयर वी आर डिस्कसिंग थर्ड पेपर लिटरेचर ऑफ नाइनटीन सेंचुरी इंग्लैंड इन दिस मॉड्यूल बेस्ड ऑन रोडियाड किपलिंग एंड रिटन बाय डॉक्टर अंशुल चंद्रा we will come to know about rodyard kipling's life and some of his important works his style and explanation of some of the important portions rodyard kipling his full name was joseph rodyard kipling yeah. joseph rodyard kipling was an english author journalist and poet in the late 19th and early 20th centuries he was awarded the nobel prize in 9, 1907 for literature and become the youngest recipient to have received the award till the day kipling was born in bombay on 30th december 1865 he was sent to england at the age of 6 where he lived with a couple mr and mrs holloway with his sister kipling's childhood can be described as an unhappy one those years of humiliation torture and oblique were recalled through his autobiography in 1878 kipling went on to attend united service college at westward he took up a job as an assistant editor of the civil and military gazette at lahore In 1891 he comes in contact with Walcott Ballester who was an American author and publishing agent with whom he collaborated on a novel The Naulakha T.S. Eliot said an immense gift for using words an amazing curiosity and power of observation with his mind and with all his senses the mask of the entertainer and beyond that a queer gift of second sight of transmitting messages from elsewhere a gift so disconcerting when we are made aware of it that dense forth we are never sure when it is not present all this makes kipling a writer impossible wholly to understand and quite impossible to be little kipling's writings are a reflection of daily newspaper events that shows the rise of nationalism and the industrial revolution the themes of his poetry directly relate to the value of victorian era like imperialism religion india masculinity and soldiers kipling's if if was written by rudyard kipling in an inspirational and didactic way it first appeared in his collection rewards and fairies in 1909 kipling wrote this poem with dr leander star jameson in mind the poem is written in the form of paternal advice to the poet's son about moral lessons and conduct it was adapted as a song by johnny mitchell on her album shine in 2007 roger whitaker also performed this poem under the title a song for eric it is about becoming mature and becoming an adult poem advises to be self confident and ignore all doubts in first stanza poet tells about patience honest and fortitude of character in the second stanza the poet asks to pursue one's goal in the correct way in the third stanza the poet wants to say that if people want success in life then they must take risks in life and they must be hopeful even if all things do not work out in a desired way in the last stanza the poem takes a turn and gives message that once they have gained their aim they should show ultimate modesty the poet wants that a successful person should become a man who can fit well with all class of the society 
at the end he says that if readers pay attention to his advices then no one can stop them from achieving success in life and being a man in the real sense in the last line readers realize that the poem is addressed not to them but to a younger son in the form of passing down of knowledge and wisdom from a father to his son the central idea of the poem is to become a human being having all virtue for betterment of our society after attaining the success in life a person must not lose heart and self confidence because of opposition his attitude should never be giving up Kipling says that humanity affects our daily life and also our path of success. It has four stanzas and each one has rhyming scheme A B A B C D C D. The titled word if is repeated several times to emphasize the need of hard work to gain success in life. Figures of speech used in poem are personification and metaphor. dream is personified as a master who controls our lives triumph and disaster are personified as importers who can lead us to the wrong path will is personified as a person who encourages us not to give up in the poem unforgiving minutes means time that waits for none walk with kings means to live important and rich people talk with crowd means to mix with common people knaves represent lions crowds symbolize the common people kings represent the important and rich people now in this poem you had seen that a father's commandment to a son every father is willing to show the right path to his son and through this poem on behalf of all the fathers of the world kipling is showing the right path to all the sons but through if the word with just one word he tells that everything depends upon whether you are hard working just moral or not so your success depends upon all these words if you are hard working if you are upright if you are walking on the right path in another poem kipling's recessional rudyard kipling's poem recessional published in 1897 on the occasion of queen victoria's diamond jubilee was talked much for the occasion kipling previously composed the white man's burden but replaced it with recessional kipling used his poem as a christian prayer for mercy he begged god to spare england from misfortune lest we forget the sacrifice of christ this poem is a warning to kipling's countrymen of forgetting the responsibilities of the empire recessional adopted as a hymn by the canada In Australia and New Zealand this poem is sung on Anzac Day. In the opening lines of the poem the poet speaks to the god of our father who is much more valuable than anything in the world. In the next stanza he compares alcohol and worldly power. Both can refrain to make correct judgment. In the closing lines the poet warns the english people of boasting and foolishness and asks god for mercy now kipling's recessional focuses on the worshiping god rather than on gaining worldly power the poem humbles the english people and reminds them of their responsibilities it contains five stanzas of six lines in which the first and the third and the second and the fourth rhyme with each other the closing couplet reinforces the message of kipling in the poem lest we forget repeated many times which later become linked with remembrance so you have seen 
that in this poem recessional which was liked by so many and was used as hymn a devotional song where worldly things materialistic things are compared with alcohol when you have you are under the intoxication this intoxication may be due to alcohol or due to worldly power this is just hampering your growth that is the message he is giving through this poem kipling's the white man's burden the white man's burden was published in 1899 in macleod's magazine it is written with reference to the american takeover of the philippines after the spanish american world war the concept is that the responsibilities of white europeans to bring proper civilization to the nation who do not have it kipling describes the qualities of an imperialist who suggest him to improve the world by imposing his culture on others the tone of the poet is not critical but it is encouraging the message is to encourage the growth of imperialism but it also reveals the patriarchal and the racist attitude in queen victoria's rule the opening lines of the poem they take up the white man's burden is repeated at the beginning of every stanza the first stanza explains the mindset of the europeans who placed their race above all other and consider the breed the best the poet says to take up the white man's burden which is to send the best man abroad in the second stanza kipling describes the virtue of the white man patience simple speech simplicity humbleness these are the qualities that a white man must have a the white man must be willing to seek another's profit and work another's gain in the third stanza he repeats to take up the white man's burden the white man must be a healer capable enough to fulfill the mouth of famine and get rid of disease and one who wants to take this burden must be careful as he is very near to help the natives again in the fourth stanza he says to take up the burden which is not the showy rules of the kings but hard work of common man like toil of serf and sweeper in fifth stanza he says when you take white man's burden you will get the usual reward that is hatred from common people he encourages america to reap the harvest of four centuries of european supremacy without even caring the feelings of others in the sixth stanza kipling repeats to take the white man's burden but he should not bend down or never attempt to do less it refers to the fact that the conquered will judge his fitness to rule the world in the next stanza seventh stanza and the last stanza he says to leave your childish days and become an adult man you must ignore easily brought honor and the freely given praise and seek the manhood that comes from all the thankless years now you see that in this poem white man's burden the central idea of the poem is that the real work of empire building is done by those who often stay in inhospitable conditions on whom is the burden that is the question white man's burden is on whose shoulder the theme of the poem links between racial ideology 
and imperialism and class conflict. He wants to give message that the white man's burden is heavy. He is not only a builder of an empire, but also has to do his all duties without getting any reward or any thank in return. The poem consists of seven stanzas with eight lines each. First line is repeated in all the stanzas. All have same traditional rhyming scheme that is A, B, C, B, D, E, F, E. The term white man's burden becomes a phrase. Various metaphors are used in the poem. In the first stanza, harness is used as a metaphor for service. He says, to wait in heavy harness on fluttered folk wild. He uses light as a metaphor for civilization and night for savagery. The title of the poem, The White Man's Burden, is taken as a metaphor for cultural imperialism. Take up the white man's burden, send for the bestie breed, go bind your sons to exile to serve your captive's need, to wait in heavy harness on fluttered folk and wild, your new caught sullen peoples, half devil and half child. In his next poem, The Ballad of East and West. This poem by Rudyard Kipling, it was first published in the 1889. It is a collection of barrack room ballads and other verses. It was first called Kamal. It demonstrates that all men have in common being mortal and that in the men's difference they can still each be great men. Kipling's ballads have quality that he takes the ballads back to its roots and older folk tradition. As Charles Carrington says, I quote, The strength of the ballad lies in its galloping rhythm, which suggested to Saintsbury that Kipling had a soul for the anapest, unquote. Its rapid and varying pace exactly suited to the development of the theme showed an extraordinary ease and mastery of words. Even Swinburne could not show such vigor and flexibility. The story of the poem is simple, to do with theft, honor and strength. It is a tale of Kamal, an Afghan warrior and raider. Guides ask his men if they know where Kamal hides the mare. One of them, Muhammad Khan replies, if one knows the track of morning mist, he can find Kamal. He says that he might be near fort because he has to cross it to reach his native land. He advises the Colonel's son to ride as fast as possible and try to cut him off before he gets to the tongue of Jagai. Otherwise, Kamal will be on his homeland surrounded by his followers. Immediately, the Colonel's son mounts his dun horse. He rides until he finds Kamal at the tongue of Jagai, riding the stolen mare of his father. The colonel's son fires twice, but both go wild. The two men ride and ride, and finally the colonel's son's horse falls at a water course. Kamal pulls him free. He says it is he who allows him to run so far. The colonel's son challenges Kamal to shoot him, but also warns him of the consequences. Kamal helps him to his feet. Colonel's son is impressed by his courage, offers him his father's mare. The mare comes over to the colonel's son and Kamal decides to return the horse. He also offers his turquoise studded rain, broidered saddle and saddle cloth and silver stirrup strain. The two young men look at each other and they have taken oath of brotherhood and together return to Fort Bukla. 
as they approach the fort, the twenty swords flash in warning from the quarter guard and Colonel Sun says to lower their sword because last night he had struck at a border thief, tonight it's a man of the guides. In this poem, Kipling seems to be saying that all of us are to be some extent unable to adapt to the ways of other, but if we can put aside our differences of nationality, race, background and religion, we can make a difference. The poem describes that East and West shall never meet till God's great judgment day, but here two strong men with different backgrounds are brought face to face and they discover that they are alike and not as different as others believe. He said, Kipling said, all the people like us are we and everyone else is they. This poem is written in the style of border ballad, an Anglo-Scottish poetic form which has motifs but lacked a chorus. It begins and ends with the quatrain. It is printed as rhyming heptameters. The second quatrain has the house stock phrase. There is a couplet that is repeated with slight variations several times. There is rock to the left and rock to the right and low lean thorn between. And he may hear a breech bolt snick where never a man is seen. So we have seen that Rudyard Kipling as a poet is not only a poet, he is a preacher also. He wants to reform the society from the ills. He wants to create a brotherhood in the society. He wants that people should forget their differences of nationality, caste, color, creed and come together and work for the sake of humanity. Through his various poems, he just wants to create a just society. He gives messages. He wants to purge the society from its evils. So, he believed art for society's sake. His poems are enjoyable. His poems just give you a pleasing thought to ponder. So Kipling is no doubt a great romantic poet. Thank you for visiting E.P.G. Patshala.